Good afternoon, and welcome to my Saturday edition of Messages from the Masculine. This is episode number 450, yes, 450, and today's topic is why you need to learn self-love to succeed in life. I'm going to be very blunt in this talk, I think. So before I get into that, let me choose myself and let you know who I am and we'll get into this conversation. Um, and by the way, welcome if you're joining me and if you're watching the replay, thanks for joining me as well. And, uh, and I've got to stop cooking the table because it bumps the fu- camera every time I do that. My name is Barry <laughs> My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and a relationship attraction expert and I help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. And I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine. And every day I do a talk on Facebook Live the title for the whole series that continues is Messages for the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart and the topic themes range from things like relationship context and single and couple type stuff because that's my skill set to in this context self-love but also about how to really find your true path and alignment to who you really are because under light, underneath all of it I'm about living authentically and being in your power and your, and your natural gifts and this is one of the ways to get there so let's jump in um, and again, this is episode 450. Yes, almost almost halfway to 500 <laughs> in this 100. Um, and the topic today is why self-love is, why you need to learn self-love to succeed in life. And I'm just watching how to jump in, so bear with me for a second as I regroup my thoughts and jump in this place. And I'm going to offer something, and I'm going to let you know right up front, I'm going to offer you something at the back end if you're interested. You don't have to do anything with it, but I'm going to let you know ahead of time. So stay at the end, please which I don't know how long it's going to be. It could be five minutes, it could be 10, it could be 15. They average around 12 or 13. So stay with me. Um, I hope to deliver some good content as well, by the way. <laughs> it's not just a pitch. The thing I've become very aware of, acutely aware of, in dealing with clients and friends and seeing posts on social media and watching people in various places of power and authority, their success is a very interesting um, topic. There are people out there who appear, this is the key, appear to be massively successful in certain ways, be it running a country, no needs mentioned, to running a corporation, or being very famous in celebrity and stars and everything else. There's a very clear delineation to me, difference between those people who are continually trying to get better and better and better because they don't feel whole, and I think you know what I mean by this, and those who are living from a place of heartfelt joy and celebration and abundance of who they really are. Because to me, success is the latter, not the former. And whether it is a corporate business role you're in, or it's a relationship-centric thing, or a fame and celebrity status thing, or a societal change thing, I don't know anything about a thing, so things that term I used, you will find yourself more, f- more in the feeling of success when you're really in a place of wholeness. Because a lot of people are driven to succeed from a place of lack and emptiness and a void. And the truth is, as matter how successful they get, they will never feel successful. And the constant striving may sound like a good skill to have to keep achieving, keep going, keep driving for those goals. But the reality is, they're going to have ulcers and stress and heart attacks and other diseases attacking their body because they're not taking care of themselves. And they're not honoring and loving who they are. And it sounds so simplistic to say this, and I know it is because it's the truth. And sometimes the truth is simple is that when you learn how to really love yourself from a very healthy place, and I'll, and I'll talk about the negatively or unhealthy place in a moment, the world changes perspective. Because first of all, when you really are loving who you are as an honorable, respectful, and appreciative way of, lo- of respe- appreciating, it, of seeing yourself and knowing yourself, your level of success is automatic inside because you're already successful because you exist. And this is one of the shortcuts, by the way, the secrets to success, by the way, I'll do that one in a moment too. So the, the negative sides of, I should say, the less than ideals are we're doing it. Thank you, Kim. Yes, love is what, you, what you're saying. Love what you're saying here. Yes, truth is always simple. It is. And by the way, I'm repeating what you're saying because this, this Facebook Live, when it starts, will end up on YouTube and people may be watching it going, who said what? They don't know what's going on. So I'm repeating what's said just so you know I'm doing that. So some of the negative... Um, ways of trying to succeed is a false sense of 
egotistical one-upmanship. I'm trying to find a way of putting it. But a lot of people do. And the, the reality is what a lot of people are doing is, Sylvana, I haven't seen you in my broadcast for a long time. Nice to see you. <laughs> truth oftentimes is. Well, Patrick, not saying truth is always simple, but truth usually is simple because there are other times what truth is. It's like lies are complicated <laughs> oftentimes. Like the, the construct of lies can be very complicated, but I'm getting off track. Let me get back onto mine first, and I'll come back to that later if I can. So... A lot of people think, act like, pretend, presume, present themselves and may convince you that they love themselves, but they don't. Because what they're doing is actually polishing their ego or attempting to cover up their flaws because they feel like they have to pretend to present a certain image. I did a talk um, three or four days ago about the difference between getting attention and keeping attention. And this is part of that, which is the recognition is that a lot of people are and I live in LA, so living in Los Angeles, you see a lot of that out there with the cars and the boob jobs, to be very simplistic. So a lot of people are tied to appearance and the um, accessories or the, um, there's another word I was looking for, it'll come back to me, ways of being that make them feel like they're going to be okay. But the problem is, like Chinese food, they it, it goes away quickly. Like two hours later, you're hungry again with Chinese food. Same thing with this idea of love when it's done from this mishandled place. That continual desire to make themselves look better and better and better to, to feel better is a never-ending cycle of repeat. If you've seen... I said this again in the other broadcast. If you've seen some of the people out there who have had plastic surgery to improve the way they look, for many of them, it's never enough. They'll get their boobs done. Then they'll get their chin done. Then they'll get their forehead done. Then they'll get their nose done. Then they'll get the lips done. All these different things because they're pursuing a goal which will never get there. Because the problem is, and this is the key, is they don't really know who they are and they don't love who they are. And it's a really missed opportunity. So I'm letting you know, if you haven't done it yet, please, that you look at this as a primary access point to learn how to be successful in life. Because my feeling is success isn't the amount of... Um, property you have, or plastic surgeries you have, or um, accumulation of things that you have. That may appear to be success because the society likes to teach you that, but the reality is that stuff is all transitory. For those people involved in the, in the crash in 2008, a lot of people lost their property, their house and other things too, when they thought they'd arrived. And a lot of people killed themselves in 2008 because they didn't know how to thrive after that. And that's the thing, is when you don't know, when you don't love yourself, and I mean love this way, and I'll explain what I mean in a second, authentic, connected to who you really are, then when something out there causes a trauma or a tragedy or a calamity in your life, you become totally reactionary to what happened, and frankly, it's very hard to get over that. Whereas if you know how to really honor, love, and respect who you are as a person, as an individual, when things happen out there, you don't become a pawn or a um, ping pong ball reacting to what's out there. You get to come from a place of wholeness because the thing about self-love, and it's, these are so simple things, I'm saying truth is simple in this sense. When you really love who you are, when you honor, respect, and appreciate who you are, then you don't need what's out there to make you feel better. So you're no longer a victim of what's out there. What's out there, a lot of times, we feel like we're at the mercy of, like when the market changes or the government switches or the right TV show comes on, or the food you want is on the table. All these sort of things, and I'm giving a whole range of them here, all these th things out there are fun things to play with, I'll put it that way. But the reality is, if they change and you're upset, they control you. We talked about this, I think this was a few weeks ago about this one, about how we become codependent at the mercy of what's around us because we don't actually have a, um, what's the word looking for? A central place to look, come from. We're actually a place of reaction to what's out there. And the biggest trap people fall into in relationships, because it's one of my areas of speciality, is the codependent model. Or I should say the codependent dysfunctional model. Because codependent relationships are based upon a lack of self love. Nine times out of ten, they're based upon what the other person could do for us. And when they don't do it, we get upset. And the problem is, you may say, well, I've got the power of being upset. No. The person who didn't do what you wanted makes you upset. That means they control your reactions. They control your emotions. You're out of whack. Not a place you want to live. Very simple. 
I'll make sure I hit all the points I want to make in this, this talk. This is, by the way, unscripted, as they always are. <laughs> so I'm hoping to get this message out there clearly. And by the way, if this resonates for you and you think some people should watch this, please share this out after I finish. We share it now if you want to, but better if you share it after I finish, because that way they can watch from the beginning, because I'm already into this one now. So self-love is a vital part of succeeding in life. And I want to speak, let me speak from this angle. When you are truly in a place of self-love and you appreciate who you are and you care about who you are, and you do it, you love yourself in a way that what happens in life happens out there. The power of learning to love yourself means that everything outside of you has no control over you. Now, I, I'm going to be careful if I qualify this. You may be driving around in the car and someone hits your car and, and knocks you sideways and you get injured. Understandably, that something can happen to you, but your reaction to it is under your control. And this is the thing, when you really do love yourself, you come from a place of wholeness. So if that happened, rather than going, oh my God, my car, and you did this and this and this, you're more likely to handle it from a point of view of going, oh, this is unusual, this is not what I wanted. And you get to handle all the insurance details and stuff without getting bent out of shape. There's a power in self-love that actually gives you your power back. And it gives you the ability to respond rather than react. And that difference, response versus react, is a huge shift for a lot of people. Some people have no clue what this is like. It took me a while to get it myself. But the key I've learned for me and what I teach my clients and what I've got and what I'm offering at the end of this is a self-love practice. Because self-love is something that needs to be practiced until you get until you get it into your like your into your bones, into your into your um, psyche. It's easy to go, yeah, I love myself. Be hand in your heart, say I love myself, it's great. Well the reality is we as human beings are out of practice. When we're born, maybe we have that place in part in place. But for most of us, self-love is not a skill we know really well, and it's not a way of experiencing life that we know how to do very, very easily. I have learned, as a um, part of the journey I've been on over the years, is that habits take about 30 days to change, transform, or implant. So when you're doing something like self-love, for example, if you just do it once in the morning and you go, oh, I'm feeling great, I love myself, great, or you, do a, you go to an event or a seminar where everyone's like loving each other and saying, we love each other, we're all great, we're wonderful. If you don't do that repeatedly for a month, I guarantee you in about two or three weeks after that event, you'll forget all about it and you won't remember what happened. So self-love is a thing like any other skill that should be practiced. And I mean it in the sense that if you practice how to love yourself, right, let me break it down. The self-love practice I'm gonna offer at the back end, and you'll hear about in a moment, keep, I keep promoting it, is basically a mirror exercise where you connect with your eyes in the mirror and look into your, into your own eyes and you tell yourself you love yourself. And you do that for a period of time, ideally for five minutes or more. You do it twice a day for 30 days. It sounds so simple, but it's so easy to get off track. You forget, you don't do it, other things happen. So at the end of 30 days, if you do do that, you start reinforcing a new habit, which actually increases your ability to love yourself and then love other people. And when you do have this place of self-love um, fueled and inspired, it's a reservoir that you can tap into. It's a place that you come from where the world around you responds versus reacts to you. The same as way that you are responding and not reacting to the world around you. I'm attempting to give you like some some small insights into what this is about because the reality is self-love is something that is so underrated, so underrated, and yet also overlooked, under over. <laughs> but also the piece people think about self-love is the thing you do in, in, in relationship. I'm talking about and what I said about success in life is because when you love yourself. The way you relate to money changes. The way you relate to your health changes. The way you relate to your co-workers changes. The way you relate to service personnel changes. The way everything in your life reacts to you changes based on how you actually love yourself. And that shift will change and transform your life experience in a way that you can't even imagine until you do it. So I mentioned how this thing works, but the one I've actually created, and I'm gonna let you know now, is I've got I've created a a, medita a guided meditation, my voice on audio with music in the background. Sounds so nice. Um, <laughs> but basically there's a morning one and an evening one that are designed to help you connect to yourself and feel in love with yourself. And then in a way, integrate before you go out in the world. So you set up your day to match that mode, going that vibration through the whole day. That's the morning meditation. The evening meditation is the same mirror process working with that, bring it inside. 
And at the end of it, you're, bring, you're bringing gratitude to everything that happened over the day. It's an actually a bookend for the day, morning and evening, and it goes together, two audio meditations um, that I love, they, they, they work. With that is also a guide that I created, which basically is the documentation of what I talk about all the time, written it down in a way that makes sense about the strengths, the power, the effects, the price you pay, how to do it. And I also include in this one, for those of you who have, um, you can work on the self-love, but you feel like you've got some, image, some body image issues, some challenges with your self physiology. And this came up because a lot of people I know in LA have body image issues. That's why they're working so hard with working out or eating right diets or doing plastic surgery. In the written book, I didn't do it in the verbal because that's, that's a different one. In the written um, guidebook, I actually explain how to do the process so you start loving your body as well as yourself. And frankly, if you do those two things and if you've got body, if you have body image issues or you just don't know how to love yourself, this will change your life absolutely will change your life and the reality is that you are the only one stopping you from doing this it's not to anybody else you can do it so i've told you what it is i'm telling you how it works and i'm very passionate about this as you can tell probably from my broadcast but i figured i'd do a broadcast today just speaking specifically about this one topic and what i'm offering you the self-love practice i offer which includes the two audios and the guidebook is on my website and you can check it out and, and download it if you want it's barryselby.com forward slash self-love. Self-love is a one word. And that will help you with a man or woman, child, adult, whatever you want. You can do it yourself. You're welcome, Patrick. Thank you for watching. So I've got some people already started, started getting it and using it, buying it and using it. And I'm waiting to hear feedback because the thing is I've got to wait a month. Because in the way I've written it out is at the end of the month I want to hear from you. So by the way, it's not something you just take and put in the closet, as it were. You download it, you use it. And if you do sign up, which I invite you to do, I want to hear from you. I want to know how it worked for you. And if there's any problems, challenge you had along the way, or what, what transformed, because I know this stuff has power, and you deserve that power in your life. I think you've got my, that it was, it was not the most, so, that wasn't the most, wasn't the soft sell. You're in, Karen, thank you. <laughs> it's like, it isn't what I would call a, um, it's not a soft sell, but it's important. I want to make sure that you get the point of this. It's not I'm trying to sell you like, you know, um, snake oil. <laughs> I'm not a snake oil salesman. I couldn't, I couldn't if I tried. But this I believe in. And I really feel... Um, well, Patrick, you're quoting a book. Love is letting go of fear. Yes, indeed. But love also is a um, fear remover. Try that one on for size. Lo and the thing is, it's funny. I was reading... Um, oh, <laughs> of course. I'm in the process of editing a book that I'm part of that's coming out in a couple of weeks because I took the editing over to fix it. And I'm re reading the chapters of the different authors. It's a chapter book. There's 26 of us in the book. I mean, one of the authors. And one of the women wrote the book, which is powerful. She talks about how she could find, like in English, we only have a few words for love. And yet in, we have like, you know, for, I don't know what she wrote, but like for words like pain or other things, that are like, there's thousands of other words, but for love, there aren't that many. But the reality is it doesn't need that many. My thoughts. Self-love as a, Holistic, selfless, um, what's I'm looking for? I won't say unconditional necessarily, but as a selfish act, it's one of the biggest game changers you can have in your life. And even though there aren't thousands of words for love, loving yourself is one of the keys. And I'm realizing it's like, because I'm going to go off on a tangent here for a second. Um, for those of you who don't know, the word love in the Bible is miswritten. Yes, it's miswritten. <laughs> I'm going to go on a tangent here. There's a favorite, famous quote about um, the love of money is the root of all evil. Actually, it used to, be the, used to be shortened to the money is the root of all evil. Well, the reality is, is that when they translated the Greek to the English, to the King James Bible, in Greek, there are more words for love than there are in English. I don't know why I'm going to tell you this, but I've got to tell you this. So in love, in Greek, there are several words that translate to love, but not the word love. In Greek, there's love that is... Um, romantic love, which is eros. There's unconditional love, which is agape. There's familiar love, which is uh, no. There's brotherly love, brotherly love, which is philos, which is Philadelphia, philo, not philo do, but philo or philos. And there's another one for familiar love, which I think is um, aram. No, that's that's no. <laughs> that's a musketeer. That's not what I'm thinking of. Anyway, there's there's four or five words in Greek that mean love, and when they translate to English in the Bible, the phrase the love of money is the root of all evil. It's actually a mistranslation. When you go back to the original, original wording, it's the lust after money that is the root of all evil. 
So money is not the root of all evil, first of all, and loving it isn't the root of all evil. It's lusting after it, it's the coveting, it's the greed about money that is the root of all evil in the Bible quote. I'm not saying it's the life of philosophy, I'm just talking about the Bible. So recognizing that the word love isn't always as clear as you want it to be. I think that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I just have done tangent, so I apologize for that, but I just wanted to explain that. So bottom line is very simple. Self-love is a key that will change your life. It will open the door to success. It will connect you to what's possible and make amazing things happen in your life. If you're loving yourself now, great. If you want to have some tools to do it, my self-love practice will help you. There are other things out there as well. I'm biased. <laughs> That's what I do. So that I'll put the link in below as well for in case you didn't want to say it again. It's barryselby.com, which is my website. barryselby.com forward slash self-love or one word. I will put, the, put the, the link in the comments below and also offer you if you want to discuss and learn how you can have more. <laughs> Thank you, Karen. I feel my passion for this transmitting through, through the video. I needed to talk about it, so I appreciate the feedback. Thank you for that, Karen. Um, if you're someone who's also looking for love in the wrong places and you want to realign your values for a relationship, I do invite you to reach out to me for a discovery session. I'll put the link for that below as well. Um, that's barryselby.com forward slash chat. Um, if you want to check my website out, it's barryselby.com. It'll, it'll forward to my main site and you can browse everything there. And let's chat to the left-hand side and then self-love practice around the middle of the menu. So either way you can find it. But thank you for joining me and thanks for watching by the way this is my daily broadcast I do this at 5 p.m. Pacific time every day and it's otherwise scheduled um, so tomorrow will be number 451 not sure what to talk about yet but something good I'm sure so I wish you well I invite you to look at how you can love yourself more if my program speaks to you jump in and get it it's not a program it's a practice um, if it speaks to you jump in and get it and if you have questions comments about this broadcast please put them below and I'll talk I'll respond to you in the comments afterwards and again if you know anybody should watch this please share it out to them on Facebook or on YouTube if you're watching it on YouTube and by the way oh, I need to tell you that too this is my daily broadcast on Facebook live called messages the masculine to inspire the feminine heart I put these onto my business page on Facebook where they're easily more cataloged and also onto YouTube so if you watch it for YouTube viewer um, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel which is Barry Selby and the playlist is messages from the masculine and also now I'm building out my library on um, iTunes and podcast. And so Messages from the Masculine, Messages from the Masculine is the channel on YouTube. Sorry, is the playlist on my channel on YouTube. It's also the name of my podcast um, on iTunes. You can subscribe there and you can watch in the broadcast there. So with that, thank you for watching and thanks for following along and thanks for interacting. And I will see you again tomorrow for another chat about love, relationships and who knows what else. I'll see you again soon. Bye.